In the previous video, I showed that when there are two distinct eigenvalues of a matrix, their corresponding eigenvectors are also distinct in the sense of being linearly independent. But what happens when there are two identical eigenvalues of the same matrix? The goal of this video is to figure out that question. Let's begin by working through the same proof that I worked through in the previous video, and we'll just see what happens. The only thing that we change here is our assumption. In the previous video, we assumed that the matrix had two distinct eigenvalues, and now here we are assuming that the matrix has two repeated or identical eigenvalues. So lambda 1 equals lambda 2. Now I'm not going to go through every line of this proof because you can watch that in the previous video. I just want to get to this one stage where we drew the conclusion that beta 2 must be equal to 0. But now we have a slightly different situation. Again, we have three terms that equal the 0 vector. Now, we know that vector 2, this is an eigenvector, so this vector cannot possibly be equal to 0 because we assume, or we do not consider, the 0 vector to be a valid eigenvector. Okay, so this cannot be 0. But we still have these two terms. Now, the thing is, we know for sure that this term is definitely 0 because here we say that lambda 1 equals lambda 2. So lambda 2 minus lambda 1 obviously equals 0. So this term equals 0. And now beta 2 could be 0 or it could be some non-zero value. So there's really no constraints on beta. So the proof in the previous video doesn't tell us anything about whether the eigenvectors that correspond to these two identical eigenvalues are the same or different. So we need a different way to think about this. First of all, there is nothing wrong or even suspicious about a matrix that has two or more of the same eigenvalue. Consider this matrix, for example. It is a full rank matrix. There is nothing weird or unusual about it. Now, the eigenvalues are computed by solving the characteristic equation or the polynomial, which I can get quickly for this 2 by 2 matrix as lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 9 equals 0. If you don't know how I came up with this equation so quickly, then you should go back and review the lecture on the shortcut for finding the eigenvalues of a 2 by 2 matrix. So this factors nicely into lambda minus 3 and then that quantity squared equals 0. So that means that both of the lambdas, both of the eigenvalues of this matrix, are equal to 3. So what do we do now? Well, nothing special. We just follow the same procedure that you learned for finding eigenvectors of this matrix. So I shift this matrix by one of the eigenvalues, which is 3, and that gives us this matrix. Now we need to find a vector in the null space of this shifted matrix, and we could use the vector 1, 0. This is a good basis vector for this null space. So this was for one eigenvalue. Now we repeat the same procedure for the next eigenvalue, which is also 3, so we end up with the same shifted matrix. So now the question is, is there another vector that I could use that would be a basis for the null space of this shifted matrix? Now the answer is no, there isn't. And that's because this second component of this eigenvector must be 0, otherwise there would be some non-zero value here. And that would multiply the 1, and that would give us a non-zero element for the second element. So this element must be 0. And if this element is anything other than 0, any non-zero value, then this vector is just a scaled version of this vector. Now there is the 0 vector, but of course we don't consider the 0 vector to be an eigenvector. So the conclusion from this particular example with this specific matrix is that this matrix, which has two identical eigenvalues, has only one eigenvector. So that's just one of the possibilities for a repeated eigenvalue. There is another possibility. Take this matrix, for example. 
its eigenvalues are 6, 4, and 4. So two repeated eigenvalues and one distinct eigenvalue. Now let's compute the eigenvectors associated with these eigenvalues. And I encourage you to pause the video, work through this yourself, and see if you can come up with the three eigenvectors here. So let's start with the first eigenvalue of 6. So we shift this matrix by 6 times the identity matrix. That gives us this matrix. And now we need to find a vector that is in the null space of this matrix. So it turns out that a good solution here is 3, minus 3, and 1. And you can go through this pretty quickly to confirm that this is the case. So 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. Minus 3 times minus 1 is 1. Uh, sorry, plus 3. And 1 times 0 is 0. So minus 3 plus 3 plus 0 is 0. So that works for the first row. Of course, it also works for the second row. Here we get 1. So 3 times a third is 1. Minus, minus 3 times a third. So that ends up being 1 plus 1 is 2. And then 1 times minus 2 is minus 2, of course. So here we get 0 as well. So this works. Now let's try lambda equals 4. So the question here is whether we will get one or two eigenvectors for the same eigenvalue 4. So one such vector is this eigenvector, 1, 1, 0 because 1 times this plus 1 times this plus 0 times this is 0, and same for all these rows. Is this the same vector that you came up with? Well, maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. Maybe you came up with this vector as the eigenvector of this matrix, 0, 0, 1. So 0 times 1, and 0 times 1, and then 0 times 1. So this also gives the 0 vector for all three of these rows. Notice that these two eigenvectors are not the same. They are linearly dependent. In fact, in this particular case, they happen to be orthogonal, which is the most amount of linear independence that you can possibly have. So this is different from the previous example, because here we had two identical eigenvalues with distinct eigenvectors. Here's a picture for what, this, what these possibilities mean geometrically. First is the picture for distinct eigenvalues. That's what I talked about in the previous video. So they always have distinct eigenvectors. Each distinct eigenvalue has its own distinct eigenvector. And that eigenvector is a basis vector that spans a line, a one-dimensional subspace. Now, when you have a repeated eigenvalue, you can have one of two situations. First, you can have both eigenvectors of the same eigenvalue be on the same one-dimensional subspace, so the same line. In that case, the total eigenspace is actually smaller than Rn. So the eigenspace in this particular example is two-dimensional, and that's just a subspace of the ambient three-dimensional space. The second possibility is that the two distinct eigenvectors are attached to a single eigenvalue. And what is the subspace spanned by two linearly independent vectors? You guessed it, it's a plane. So a repeated eigenvalue can have an eigenplane, and the two eigenvectors are basis vectors for that eigenplane. I'd like to illustrate this concept to you in MATLAB. So here is our matrix. It's the same matrix as in the slides. Here is the eigen decomposition. And here, this is not strictly necessary to sort them like this, but I'm just showing you some code to sort the eigenvalues. So in this case, you can see that the eigenvalues are not sorted. They go 4, 6, 4. But let's say you want them to be sorted for whatever reason. So what I'm going to do is sort the, now you don't want to sort the entire matrix as an input, you only want to sort the diagonal elements of the eigenvalues matrix. So this gives us, the sort function gives two outputs. One is 
the vector of the, the sorted values, so now this is sorted, and also the sorting index, so 1, 3, 2, so the first element and then the third element and then the second element. Now you'll notice that I actually overwrote D here, so D was a vector, uh, sorry, D was a matrix initially, and now it's a vector. Okay, and here I'm going to plot the eigenvectors, and here I'm going to plot a subspace that is spanned by the eigenvectors that have the same eigenvalue. Here's what that picture looks like. It just looks like a V. It looks incomplete. However, this is actually a three-dimensional space, and we're just looking through two of the dimensions right now. So here you go. Here are the eigenvectors associated with lambda equals 6. That was the one distinct eigenvalue that this matrix has. And here are the two eigenvectors that are associated with lambda equals 4. And so you can see that the subspace that, they, that these two span is a plane. So that means that the eigenspace is a one-dimensional subspace for this eigenvalue. But for the eigenvalue of 4, we actually get an eigenplane and not an eigenvector. And these two vectors are basis vectors for this plane. Repeated eigenvalues may seem like some weird abstract quirk of mathematics, but this is actually a serious issue in practical data analysis applications. For example, in my own research on multivariate neural time series analysis, I encounter repeated eigenvalues sometimes, and I need to diagnose them and know how to deal with them appropriately. This situation doesn't happen all the time, but it's frequent enough that I have to keep an eye out for it. I will have more to say about these kinds of issues for practical data analysis in my course on dimensionality reduction and source separation. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed learning from this lecture, and now you know the possibilities for repeated eigenvalues.